being hospitable to our neighbors and our friends. All right. Uh, no, I got it. Hold on, why is it doing that? Okay. Okay. All right. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. Welcome everyone to our Lenten series called Transfiguration based on themes from the book of the elements. If you haven't had a chance to get the book of the elements, you can read it past Lent. You don't have to read it just for this series. I'm telling you, it is changing people's lives. It is People are coming to me and saying, Abuna, I never want to be the same anymore. I want to invite Christ to make a real change in my life. And it's happening all over the country. There's people that are following this series from everywhere and people are telling me how much... They're, they're discovering the beauty of our Orthodox faith through this book. So I encourage you, like I said, if you don't have it, buy it as a blessing. Keep it as like a blessing in your house. Take a picture with it. Do a selfie. Do whatever you got to do. It's a really what a wonderful book. So as we were talking last week, we were talking about this concept about becoming earth. The book talks about this concept about becoming earth. And what does earth mean? Earth is something that only receives. Earth is dust and it's dirt and it receives rain and it receives seeds and it receives everything else that God wants to put in this earth. And so something that the church fathers teach us always, and this is not, this is not an option. This is not something that it's one of the things that the church likes. This is the whole spiritual life. I'll say it right now, but there's a lot of people coming in, so just give it a second so people aren't um, distracted. Our church, our church has taught us, first in Christ, first in Christ and in his writings, sorry, in his teachings, and in the writings of Scripture, and in the lives of those that have lived the greatest holy spiritual lives in the whole world, they will tell you the only secret to the spiritual life to be filled with God. Last week we talked about making a real change and not a superficial change. How many of you have tried to make superficial changes? Maybe at New Year's. You, you made a change and you thought, okay, I'm going to stop doing whatever and I'm still the same. Maybe you were angry. You're an angry person and you... Now, maybe you're not yelling at your, 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 your friend or your spouse or your parents, but you still have anger in your heart. You just go to the room and like, you know, bite a pillow or something. You do something to take out your anger, but you still have anger. How many of us are really seeking change before we take any one, any, one more step? I can't be like this anymore. I cannot be lukewarm, shallow, cold-hearted towards God, towards other, that is not Christ. That is not Christ, and we have to understand that. So we spoke about how becoming earth means emptying yourself completely. Emptying yourself means the opposite of self-love. Our whole world tells you you should love yourself. The new movement of self-help is love yourself. I'm not talking about take care of yourself. I'm talking about love the self, do everything that makes me happy and feeds me, and I am the center of my world. God can never be the center of your world if you are the center of your world. So we talked about this. We talked about, I mentioned last week, a blind beggar who saw Jesus, and he shouted to Jesus when he heard that by the crowds, because he was blind, he said, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And they said, shh, be quiet. You're filthy, you're dirty, like get out of here. Like a poor man, stop disrupting Jesus right now. And he shouted more, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And the Bible says that Jesus stood still. We want to know what will get God, what would get God to stand still, to turn to me. It is the spirit and the way of a beggar. We have stories in the Gospels where Jesus is telling a story about a Pharisee who says, Lord, I thank you that I'm not like other heathens and other people. 
I fast twice a week. I, you know, give to the poor. I do all these things. And he's raising his hand. And then there was a tax collector or a publican in the cor- corner of the, of the temple beating his chest saying what? God have mercy on me, a sinner. And it says that the publican went away more justified than the Pharisee. But I love being the Pharisee. Being the Pharisee feels right. It feels good. People, are, people see me. They praise me. They make me feel like this is how I want to feel. And the publican is still the same dirty, broken person in the corner. But the most important thing is what does God see? Do you care about what God sees? We talked about the Jesus prayer because the Jesus prayer is not a prayer that changes other things. It is a prayer that changes me. Changes me. So as we progress through this book, the next stage that needs to be mentioned is this concept of becoming water. Becoming water. There's a part in the book that, that uh, Elijah, who is the main character, is going and he goes to a desert monk and tells him, let's dig. Let's dig in the desert. I'm not going to give away. It's not like a magical part, but it's a, it's a part of the book. I told you guys you need to start reading. <laughs> so I have to talk about the book. And he's living with this Abba, or this desert father, and he's coming and he says, let's go. We need to dig. And he's digging, and it's hot, and we're hungry, and we're fasting, and they're digging. What are we digging for? After a few days of digging, 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 what came out of this valley that was dug? Water. If you've ever seen how a well is dug, I, I, I may have shared this in, in different talks, you may have heard me say it, but you have to dil- dig a hole very deep into the earth. You have to empty the earth completely of itself. And then as you dig, 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 100 feet down, you might find a little bit of water trickling in and filling this well. And what does it mean to become water? Once you dig, it is then that God wants to fill you. God has a desire to fill you, but he will not fill you with other dirty stuff inside. I'll never forget one time I was in, me and Sherry, we lived in Kenya, and we went on a house visit, and they were the poorest, so we were already in the very, very poor area, the, the, the tribal areas, and we were in the poorest congregation members of the whole and they wanted to honor me and Sherry. And so they got us one soda, which is like 50 cents, okay? Which is like a day's worth of work. A full day's of back-breaking work. And they gave us a soda and a cup because they couldn't get us two sodas. And the cup had mud on the bottom of it. And as we're sitting there, the chickens are eating out of the cups. <laughs> like, okay. And they're like, here. And they, gave, they wanted to give my wife the, the they gave her the cup. She looks in the cup. She like, looks at me like, what am I supposed to do with this cup? And they gave me the bottle. And they went into like the back of the hut to get something. And Jerry's like, I can't drink out of this cup. This cup is nasty. So I said, okay, switch. Do the sign of the cross, down the hatch. We switched again, okay? And it was disgusting, okay? This was the worst cup of soda I've ever drunk in my life because it was filled with mud on the bottom of this cup. As I'm watching the chickens drink out of the same cup okay and I'm thinking we can't fill a cup with that same dirt with that same you have to become earth you have to come to the point where you say Lord I am nothing and I only want you like Buna we're not monks here Buna be real change is, is, is important And I cannot be changed unless I become dirt. But if I become dirt, I get filled with the fullness of Christ. That it is what St. Paul says, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live. I'm sorry, it's not Paul. It is Christ who lives in me. Why? Because he, he says, I've been crucified. What do you mean you've been crucified? You're writing a book. You're not crucified. He says, my ego, my selflessness, this monster inside of me has been crucified. So what does it mean to become like water? It means to go down to the lowest place because when you pour water, where does water go? It sinks all the way to the lowest place. Even 
lower than the earth. When you pour water into the earth, if you ever go to the beach and you're building sandcastles and you pour water, where does the water go? It goes deeper than the earth itself. It's when you become small. When you always say no to yourself in order to say yes to him. Let's be honest. You can't say no. You can't say yes to God when all you do is say yes to yourself. But it feels good. Yes. It, 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 it's going to be fun. Yes. It's going to make me popular. Yes. It's going to, you know, make everything work out for me. Yes. I'll get a promotion. Yes. If I say no to all of those things, I'm going to be small. I'm going to be nothing. But then when God says, obey me, you're going to say, yes, Lord. I said no to everything else in the world. I said no to every other temptation. Saying no, and I talk about this a lot, and I, and, I, and I want it to be a part of our lives. Saying no to the self means saying yes to God. Saying yes to God, we don't just say yes to God for ourselves, but we say yes to God and to our neighbors. See, when love, to choose him and to choose your neighbor instead of yourself is to choose love. We are not choosing spirituality, that I'm the guy that prays well, or that I'm the guy that knows the Bible, or that I'm the, the, the young lady that goes to all of the church services. That's not what you're choosing. You are choosing the path of love. We are seeking love, and his way, is the, the, the way to the kingdom is the way of love. There's no other way. Love is the whole gospel. And I cannot love others when all I love is myself. I can love myself like others, like, sure, like I, I think I have 10 minutes at the end of the day. I'd be happy to love you for these 10 minutes. It's because it's all me. My life is all me. My vision is all me. My goals are all me. And that's what we have to be careful of. You see, you're going to find the way to the kingdom when love enters your soul. Let's look at what St. Paul tells us in Romans chapter 5, verse 5. Now, hope does not disappoint. I actually didn't put the verse right before it. He talks about how persecution and suffering and tribulations bring character. And character brings hope. And then St. Paul says this. Now, hope does not disappoint. So he's saying tribulations will change us. Tribulations will make a difference. Tri tribulations are what's going to make us really feel empty of ourselves. But then he says this, hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. You may not know what the power of this verse is. When I tell you a verse up there, it's the most powerful verse in the Bible. Okay, That's the rule. When I show a verse up here, you have to know it's the most powerful verse in the Bible. Why? Your heart has a selfish view of love. That even in our friendships, in our marriages, I scratch your back, what should you do? Scratch my back. I tap on you, you tap on me. But I'm never going to just tap on you and say, that's enough. Like, that's all I wanted to do is to serve you. That's selfish love. And we tell this to people who are, who are getting engaged and getting in relationships. We say, be careful of the person that is self seeking in that love relationship if it's what you are going to do for me you see love has to come from god whether you give me love or not you're, you're the people in your lives ability to give you love you have a capacity for love this much the most amazing best friend spouse mother whatever can give you this much of that the most amazing one and you have need of love this much. And you're fighting with your wife and your friends. Like, you never love me. You're like, okay, I'm going to give you one drop. Is that what you want? One drop in this huge barrel. Love has to come from up. And the only way that love comes from up is when I empty myself. I have to empty myself. I have to get rid of my selfishness and my pride. You see, we're in a process of transformation. And transformation from sin that over time has taken root in us has slowed us down from becoming what God meant for us to be. You see, we, even Abuna prays this in communion. In communion, when Abuna is praying, right before he gives communion, he says, Lord, 
remove the sin implanted in our members. So sin isn't just sin. It's got roots. It's digging. And it's implanted. And it's, it takes a lot of work to get out. So it's a process. And you cannot get out those roots unless you yourself dig an empty self. Because a lot of my sins, 99.99% of my sins are all feeding what? Self. Please don't let this be a sermon. Let it be the truth that comes from the Word of God. Our goal is to be like Christ. I went to a discussion and somebody was telling me that basically, like, I want to like, what do I need to change? Like, I'm good. I pray. I read my Bible. I love the Lord. We have a good relationship. But that's not what he's asking of us. He's asking us to be him. To be like Christ. God does not give you his Holy Spirit to be a nice guy. God does not give you his body and his blood fully and unite with you in oneness. For you to smile at your friends. God gives you Himself so that you could become God. You could become like God. That you could become... Uh, 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 actually, the saints say about St. Macarius, he became a God upon the earth. People don't like this phrase, and I hear comments. Read the Church Fathers. Clearly, if you don't like this term, you've never read the Church Fathers. Become a God upon the earth. What does that mean? What does it mean to become a God... Does it mean that I'm going to be God like I'm God, God? What he means by God is going to become, you're going to become like God. They describe St. Macarius as this. Why? Because he covered the sins of his brother. He covered the sins of others. He sacrificed for the sinners. He says, so he became like a God upon the earth. Like God upon the earth. Love has to be the path to salvation. So what are you being purified of? When we talk about water, because water purifies, water cleanses. And when we talk about love, we are talking that you would be purified of anything that is not love. Look at what's going on in your life. Think about your relationships and the pain in your relationships. The pain in your relationships is because you don't have love. You don't have, no, you might have your love, which is a, it's a dirty water type of love. I'm talking about love that comes from up, that God is pouring in me. When you've met a saint that is full of love, you know that this person is not just a nice guy. If you've met a holy person that sacrifices for others and gives themselves fully to others, and they're just pouring themselves, even St. Paul says, I pour out myself as a drink offering. I'm pouring out myself. He says, I will spend and be spent for your souls. He says this in 2 Corinthians chapter 13. When he's talking about his love, he says, I will spend and I will be spent. I am what's going to be spent. Okay? There's a beauty in this. But when you enter into this process of being purified, it leads you to despair a little bit. How many of you, when you realize the sins that... You're exposed to the sins that are in your heart and in your life. It makes you feel like, just like, I'm a terrible person. God, I have anger. and God, I have greed. And God, I have lust. And God, I have pride. And God, I have... And it leads you to despair. How many of you feel like you felt as God is purifying this dirt from you, like when you, you know, are cleaning like the pores of your face and you have, you know, acne or whatever, and the, the dirty stuff comes out, it's ugly. It is ugly and it's inside of you. And nobody wants to see that. I would rather it be inside than outside. It's a process. You see, and sometimes it makes you feel like, I can't do this anymore. I discovered how ugly I am inside, how selfish I am inside, how little love I have inside. Elijah in the book, he felt he needed to be purified, but it, it broke him a lot. And he was talking to, was talking to God, and he heard this from God. Or he heard this from a heavenly person that's telling him about God. She says, my sweet Elijah, your sins are almost unnoticeable in the vastness of the love of God. You're saying, but Lord, I'm filthy. Like, I, don't even, I can't even look at you. And this heavenly person is saying, your sins are almost unnoticeable in the vastness of the love of God. Can a little dust on the feet of a child going to swim in the ocean be seen as troubling the ocean in any way? 
I want you to imagine yourself at the beach with sand on your feet and you go in, in, the, in, in the ocean. Some of you neat freaks that don't like see like sand on your kids' feet, right? Do you ever say, no, no, you're going to make the ocean dirty? Don't go in there, you're going to make the ocean dirty? It's not going to have any impact on the ocean. You have no idea, my sweet Elijah, the love and ever faithful kindness of God. One willingly drowns in this ocean. And instead of losing oneself, one finally knows their value and their personhood in that love. The Holy Spirit communicates this intimately to all those who repent, to all those who pray and seek this drowning. If you want to change, you are not changing and you are not bringing out the ugly things inside of you just to say, I'm ugly and I got so many things bad going on inside of me. What it's there for is that you would drown in the love of God. And we're not drowning. I don't need it because I have everything else. I got my job, I got my family, I got my friends, I got my whatever. So I don't need the love of God. Empty yourself and you will dive into the ocean and you will drown in the love of God. You see, this water that we need, if you imagine like what happens in baptism and what takes place, this baptism is a purification. Become water that you would be purified. And what happens in the baptismal font? You guys know what happens? What dies inside? Do you guys know? What's the word that I always use and I have to explain? You have two guys inside of you. What is it called? What dies inside the the baptismal font? Anyone remember? The old man. Very good. I was like, nobody really listens to me actually. The coffee must be really good here. Okay. The old man. You have this funny nature inside of you. It's the old man. Right? It's It's this old man. That's what dies. And what happens in the baptismal font when you're purified? A new man is created. The person that has a different heart, a different mind. You see, this water means that the humbling of ourselves is that the old man dies. The self-love so that we can be able to love others. As we get closer to the cross, as we draw closer to the cross, and Jesus on the cross in Lent. So sometimes we just focus on Lent, 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 and then like just Good Friday is when we really focus on the cross. I want to prepare you for the cross now. As you draw closer to the cross of Jesus, let the container of your life be the cross. What does that mean? What does it mean that the container of your life is the cross? In that everything you do is done in sacrificial love for God and for your neighbor. When you look to Jesus... When you look to Jesus on the cross, that is the icon of sacrifice to God and sacrifice for who? All others. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. What do you mean they don't know what they're doing? They know what they're doing. Like, like you want to be on the cross. They know what they're doing. Give it to them. Like, stick it to these people. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. You need to be the cross. It says, Lord, give me this sacrificial love that loves God with my whole heart and loves others. Stop making the faith cheap. The faith is not cheap. The Christian faith is not a cheap or a smile in the grocery stand line. it's, It's way more than that. In Exodus... Let's look, let's look at the first John first. He says, by this we know love. St. John, the beloved, says, by this we know love. Because he laid down his life for us, and we also ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. Who are you laying your life down for right now? Who are you laying your life down for right now? Other than somebody who's going to love you back. Somebody who's going to give back to you. Who are you laying your life down you see, this was the model of the Christian faith. You know, in the early church, in the early church, they used to, when they would receive in Jerusalem, people coming from everywhere to attend the feasts in Jerusalem, you know what they would do? They would fast for three days because the people were poor. They would fast them and their kids for three days so that they could ration the food to save it for the people that were going to come and they were going to open up their homes too. You see, this was the mind of the church. All right, kids, we're not going to eat for three days. Why, mommy? Why, daddy? We're hungry. Because we might have guests in a few days. And we want to make sure that we can honor them as we honor Christ. 
what would the mind of those children be? I want you to think about your and mine, like our our snotty children, right? Our selfish children. You know why? Not because they're selfish, but because I'm selfish. I don't know what it means to love the way God loves me, wants me to love. Even Moses, when God was so frustrated that they were dancing before the golden calf and worshiping the idols and doing foolish things. And God said, by the way, your people are downstairs doing a musibah. They're, they're, they're making a disaster of themselves. He goes down. He sees them. He throws the Ten Commandments. They break. He's so angry. And then God said, that's it. Let's destroy these people and start a new people. Now it came to pass on the next day that Moses said to the people, you've committed a great sin, so now I will go up to the Lord. Perhaps I can make atonement for your sin. Then Moses returned to the Lord and said, oh, these people have committed a great sin. He didn't say they didn't sin. He says, you're right, they sinned. Listen to what he says, pay attention. And have made for themselves a God of gold. They're terrible. Yet now, if you will forgive their sin, but if not, I pray, blot me out of your book, which you have written. Oh my gosh, Moses, what did you just do? What did you do, Moses? You just told God, if you don't save them and forgive them, then what? I don't need to be part of your book. Look at how Moses had a love for his people. St. Paul says the same thing. Actually, in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, he says the same thing. This is the heart of God that you need to be filled with. And you cannot do it by going and smiling and hugging, kissing everybody. That's not what I'm talking about. You have to be empty that you might be filled. Think about St. Moses the Strong. As he was called to take part in the judgment of one of the monks, they said, Abba Moses, one of the monks have sinned. Please join the council as we come to judge the monk. And St. Moses begins, to, he's carrying a bag of sand, and this bag of sand is leaking sand. And he's walking in and he's making a mess all over the the room. And they're like, Abba Moses, what are you doing? He says, I'm coming to judge my brother while I'm forgetting my own sins. You see, St. Moses had no room in his heart to judge his brother. He had no room. I'm coming to love my brother, not to judge him. And this is exactly what we need to figure out, what I need to do. We have a responsibility to care for the salvation of others, not judge them. I want you to understand something about water. Water gives life. When you become water, water gives life. Think about Jesus. Jesus came. Did he give the Samaritan woman a physical water? We don't see it in the story. He gave her himself the living water. And he said, when you drink of this water, it will become in you a what? A fountain springing up into everlasting life. You know what he's telling the Samaritan woman? You're going to become water. That you will become water. And after she changed and she met Christ, she went and she was water for all the Samaritans. And she began to share with them, are you water or not? If Christ is in you, you will be the fountain. But right now, I'm not even a drop of water because I'm selfish and I have a lot of self-love. In the book, Every time Elijah meets these spiritual people, they say, be friends with hunger. Become a friend with hunger. And we in the church, we fast to train ourselves to be friends with hunger. Why? Because when you're hunger, when you're hungry, you begin begin to seek what really fills. Okay, I can't eat what I'm obsessed with, which is food and entertainment and all these things. I'm not, this is not a time for entertainment. I want to be filled with him. When we hunger or in need, we seek to be filled with by him. Let's look at this passage in Isaiah 58. Is it a fast that I have chosen, a day for a man to afflict his soul? This is coming from the prophet. God is speaking. Is it to bow down his head like a bulrush and to spread out sackcloth and ashes? Would you call this a fast and an acceptable day to the Lord? Is this not the fast that I have chosen? This is God speaking. To loose the bonds of wickedness in others. To undo heavy burdens in others. To let the oppressed go free. And that you break every yoke. Is it not to share your bread with the hungry? And that you bring 
to your house the poor who are cast out when you see the naked that you cover him and not hide yourself from your own flesh then your light shall break forth like the morning god is saying when you fast in this way your light will shine forth listen keep listening with me your healing shall spring forth speedily and your righteousness shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry, and he will say, here I am. We all want that. If you take away the yoke from your midst, the pointing of the finger and speaking wickedness, if you extend your soul to the hungry and satisfy the afflicted soul, then your light shall dawn in the darkness, and your darkness shall be as the noonday. Anybody want this? Anybody want this for their life? That your darkness will be as the noonday? I have no darkness. Empty yourselves so that you might fill others. Best passage in the whole Bible. Take notes. But this comes in stages. It all comes in stages. Earth first. You can't go out and love because your love is limited. I need to empty myself that I would receive from God that I can love with an everlasting love like Christ does. That it is Christ. You know, there's a story of a person, a Catholic father in Hawaii. There was an, an island in Hawaii called Molokai. Maybe you went there for a vacation. Okay? It wasn't a vacation spot back then. Molokai, they turned into an island of lepers. And there was a Catholic father. His name is Father Damien of Molokai. Watch his movie. It's beautiful. He went to go serve these lepers. And he lived on the island. And he contracted leprosy. And he died with his people of leprosy. I wonder what this man is in God's eyes. When God looks to Father Damien and says, you went and lived among lepers? How special that is. I want you to understand something about this very, very important part. Water does not discriminate who enters into it. Who you let in your water that you begin to bless other people's lives, it doesn't discriminate. Water can wash any filthy person. And that's what it means to become water, to, to wash really people that you might even not even think that they're worthy. But if it's water from your min minimal love, you're never going to do that. But love from on high, you will wash any filthy animal out there. You will be a cleanser of the world. You will be a healer of the world, but it doesn't discriminate. The water that you become, which is this theme in the book, the water that you become becomes a water that does not discriminate who enters into it. Did Jesus discriminate anybody? Samaritan lady, the Zacchaeus, sinner woman, adulterous woman, Matthew the tax collector. He doesn't discriminate. The thief on the cross, the Roman who just put a spear in his side, he doesn't discriminate. He became water to purify all. And water came out of his side and probably splattered all over the face of this centurion that put a spear in his side. You are to become water. This is not a cool meditation. This is a cool book. This is a calling. Water is always incarnational. You know what incarnational means? Christ took flesh and he went down to the lowest part of existence. Listen to your Jesus. This is our Jesus who we love and we worship and we bow before. He says, let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit. St. Paul's talking about, but in loneliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. Let each of you look out not only for his own interests, but also for the interests of others, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God. I read a commentary that said, because he was in the form of God, not he was in the form, he says, because he was in the form of God, this is what he did. He made himself of no reputation. So the original is, because he was God, he made himself of no reputation. That's the way of God. Making yourself nothing. This translation is not the most accurate translation. It's because he was God, he made himself nothing. That's the way of God. Taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men. This is the way of Jesus, to become incarnational. Enter into the world of the broken. 
so that you might be a healer. You can purify others by becoming incarnational. God took flesh that he might live with us sinner people. You also become incarnational. You also take the lowest form and go into the existence of the broken and the hurting and the poor and the rejected and the sinful. You could do what like Jesus did? Lift them up. We die to ourselves that others might live. Listen to what St. Paul says, and I'm going to end one more slide. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels. St. Paul's saying, we as the people of God, we have a treasure in us. Earthen vessels mean they're made out of clay. They're breakable. You and I were breakable. And the only way to get this treasure is when the earth vessel breaks. There's a treasure on the inside. You can't stick your hand in. You have to break it to access the treasure. That the excellence of the power, of, of the power may be of God and not of us. St. Paul says this, we are hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair, always carrying about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus. He's saying, it is almost like we are dying. The death of Jesus is always in me. I'll never forget this. A spiritual father told me this as a servant of God. He told me this. For we who live are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal flesh. Listen to this. So then death is working in us, but life is in you. How do we give life to the world? How do you give life to your children? How do you give life to your friends? How do you give life to your broken parents? How do you give life to your neighbor? Death is working in me, and life will be in you. I remember one of my spiritual father, we were on a mission, and we were sitting like in this mission, a very, very dark place. He says, if you die, life will unleash to those that are around you. But you have to die. Caring about the dying of the Lord Jesus. The calling to a blessed life is to be a source of blessing, not seek personal blessing. You know when God called Abraham? When God called Abraham, he didn't call him to have a lot. Actually, Abraham didn't get to see much of all the promises of God. God said, and you will have children as the sand of the sea. He saw one child of his own, which was Isaac, and, and, and he died. What does he say? Now the Lord said to Abram, get out of your country from your family and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. I will bless you and make your name great. Listen to this. And you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and I will curse him who curses you and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Abraham's calling was not to be receive blessing, but it was to be the blessing. You were called to, that's what water is. To be a blessing to the others, and to your church. Glory be to God forever. Amen. Let's stand up.